Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here in the room. Thank you for tuning in, whether you're watching on our website or on any social media channel of your choice. Thank you for being here. You're joining a press conference from the 17th World Economic Forum on the Middle East and North Africa, number 10 here in Jordan, where you're watching us live at the Dead Sea. Um, thank you for joining. You're joining the press conference to launch a very special university. I'm not going to you know, take away the prize from my panelists, uh, uh, but we'll hear uh, about it uh, in a second. But first, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, my panelists to you uh, this afternoon. All the way on the other end of the panel, we are joined by Pascaline Servan Schreiber. She is the Vice President for Business Development of the University of the People. At the heart and center of our panel, we are joined by John Sexton, who is not only the President Emeritus of the New York uh, University, but also a member of the board of the University of the People. And last, uh, but definitely not least, uh, the star today, uh, we're joined by Shai Reshev, the president of the, uh, of the University uh, of the People. It's rare that you have so many presidents uh, on a panel, even for the World Economic Forum. So thank you for, for being here. Uh, Shai, without further ado, let's hand over to you. Let's hear from you um, briefly. What is the University of the People? And also, what's the announcement you, you're here to join with us today? Please. Thank you. So University of the People is the first nonprofit, tuition-free, accredited American online university dedicated to open the gates of higher education for every qualified student uh, who couldn't have done it uh, otherwise. We started in 2009. By now, we have 20,000 students from over 200 countries and territories, students who are coming to us uh, from hardship in order to study with us. Among the 20,000 students, we have over 1,000 refugees. Out of them, 600 are Syrian, and out of the 600, 300 are still in Syria itself studying with us. We are very proud to have so many students, and we are especially proud of having so, ma so many refugees. So by, but by taking these uh, 600 Syrian refugees, we also realize that the demand is huge. So 600 that made it, but tens of thousands of Syrian applied to the project, but couldn't make it. They couldn't make it because of the language barrier. Because we only teach in English, and mastering the, la the language, uh, meaning the English, is a precondition in order to be accepted. So here we have tens of thousands of people who are qualified to study with us, but cannot do so because of the language barrier. As such, we decided to replicate what we do and to create a university in Arabic, a university that will open the gates to all those who want to study but are unable to do it because of the language. We will start with a business administration and the idea is that for the first two years, the students will study in Arabic, but at the same time, we'll have courses in English to help them master the English language. And hopefully after the second year, they will be able to move into, um, the, to continue their studies in English, be part of our world um, community of students, let the world know them, let them be part of the world. We do believe that English is extremely important for the students to, to master and to study, to make them part of the world. But we want to make it easy for them, the transition. So hopefully after two years, they will study in English. And those who cannot make it in English will be able to continue and complete their degree in Arabic. Thank you. Thank you very much. John, you have been with New York uh, um, uh, University um, uh, for some time, which is quite a different model of a university as the University of the People. And yet, you not only joined uh, the board of, of uh, UOP, but you also got on a plane all the way over here uh, to Jordan to support this, this launch and this great news that Shay just shared with us. What, what drove you to, to do that? Well, I think you're right that uh, NYU uh, and the University of the People are, are, are two very different kinds of universities. But they, they both embrace the core concept that education is the future, and education is what gives people hope. 
the fact of the matter is that, as Shai said, there are an enormous number of people in the world whose talent will be wasted for the world and whose lives will never be fulfilled simply because they can't get to a university like NYU. And, and that's where the University of People comes into play. Uh, it's a little over 10 years ago that I heard Shai speak about this. And at that point, it was, uh, it was a beginning concept. It, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a dream. But I went up to him uh, after he finished talking, and, and I literally genuflected in front of him. And I said, you're my hero, uh, because you want to get education, a quality education, to, to those to whom it will mean the most who will never get it if you don't provide it the way you're talking about this. So make no mistake about it, this is a high quality education that the University of People provides. It's an accredited American university education, uh, but it, it can reach the homeless. It can reach people in remote places. It can reach into the refugee camps. Uh, it, it can reach the stay-at-home ma. It, it, it can reach anyone who, for one reason or another, can't access the kind of education NYU or the other great universities of the world provide. And, and it gives it to them because Shai has inspired not only me to become the chairman of his board and devote 10 years of my life to this, and as you say, fly here for the sole purpose of being part of this announcement, uh, but he's inspired thousands of professors to volunteer and, and, and uh, tens of thousands of others, and the students have responded to the quality of of, of what's provided. So uh, we've already proven the model. The, the University of the People English version has touched the lives of many. And uh, uh, e even with the barrier of language, to know, for example, that a year ago, December, while the bombing was going on in Aleppo, 12 students were studying for their final exams in the University of the People is an inspiration to those of us who poured ourselves into, into creating this. Uh, but speaking for myself and the other university presidents that are part of the President's Council that I chair, uh, this move today to make it available as well in, in Arabic, uh, first of all, makes it initially much more accessible to many of the refugees who don't have the English skills to study at the college level, at least as they begin. But it also makes it uh, accessible to uh, tens of millions of others around the globe whose language is Arabic and now will be able to uh, access this. Uh, this. This is a source of hope for me as I look at the world because it is a source of hope for those who are out there in the world and who thirst for a higher education and wouldn't otherwise get it. Thank you. And I, I like your diplomatic ex expression. And obviously, you've, you've been a, a fan of the first hour, but what, what you could otherwise also call somewhat of a crazy idea when you, when you started this 10 years. I mean, be honest, did you know you'd, you'd re reach so many people and you do so much good with that? Uh, I, don't, I don't think that anybody could have uh, imagined the success that Shai and his team, including Pascaline, already have created. It, it's been wonderful for me to be an observer of that and, 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 and a part of it. But uh, what happens when dreams are fulfilled is people dream even more, and that's what today is about. We knew that it's a great idea. We didn't know what, what the other would think about it, and uh, John is right. I mean, the reaction was extremely positive, and let's face it, the university is a university that is based on volunteers. We have 11,000 volunteers like John, like Pascaline, like myself, and these people made it happen, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jean. Pascaline, um, made it happen is, is kind of a wonderful bridge to, to what you do. Um, so you are the Vice President for Business Development because um, to, in order for this model to be sustainable, you need partners to, to lift this, this idea off the ground. Correct. So what, what role does partnerships play for the University of the People and I guess my second question would be, what is your message to the, to the assembled business leaders and government leaders here uh, at the DETSI, at the World Economic Forum's meeting, 
uh, roughly over a thousand. What's your message to them? How can they support the University of the People? Sure. Well, um, well, University of the People has been successful in opening the gates to higher education to um, people who come from hardship, people who have not had access, and we have a panoply of uh, groups of, of people who would have been denied <coughs> access to education in their countries for political, religious, economic, financial, you name it, circumstances. So we have been able to um, give the, the gift of education, um, which comes without tuition, but um, our students do have to pay a small assessment fee, which comes out to about $1,000 per year of study. So you can get a bachelor degree for $4,000, and that's an accredited American bachelor degree, uh, which is an extraordinary number uh, and makes it widely accessible to many. However, we still have uh, a number of people, and refugees among others, who <coughs> cannot have, uh, who do not have those kinds of means and who cannot pay the $100 per course that we require. And for them, we have been able, thanks to uh, generous donations, to offer scholarships. And so we have, uh, notably, our Syrian refugees have been able to study on scholarship with us. And we have donors who have been contributing. So first of all, we've had a, a terrific support from uh, from the foundation community, we've had grants from uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, from the uh, Hewlett Foundation, from the Ford Foundation, and, and others. So we've been very fortunate with that, and we're, but we, we want to do more. Um, as far as University of People in Arabic is concerned, because our target uh, to start off with in the first phase is to uh, offer refugees an education, we need scholarships, and we, uh, and specifically for these populations, and that includes women and, uh, and you know, people who've been um, minorities and people who've been kicked out of their homes and people who've been displaced. It's people who've been through a lot of hardship. We have been uh, supported very generously by the Andrew Mellon Foundation, which gave us the uh, initial grant to start developing courses in Arabic. And we have had the support of the Catalyst Foundation as well as uh, another, uh, another prominent foundation to support the launch of University of the People in Arabic. So what, we're, um, what we are looking for right now actually is uh, partners on the ground who want to help uh, support this effort and who can both help us on the financial side because we would love to be able to offer these scholarships and we need funders for that. But we also look for people on the ground who can, um, who can partner with us to really promote the benefits of a, a, an online education, a quality online education, which we believe is a, a crucial step to giving um, a democratized access to education in the region. And there is, especially in the MENA region, a, uh, a, a dearth of university seats and many students who cannot find, um, cannot find, first of all, university seats and then employment because their education is not necessarily uh, sufficient, doesn't give them all the skills they need to be able to study and then find employment in the region. So we, um, we welcome any, um, any uh, corporate support, foundation support, government support, and we're um, obviously here to, uh, to make it happen as a global solution. Thank you very much. So if we are coming back, let's say, in four years and meet here again on this panel, Will we be able to add a fifth chair with a with with a graduate already, or what's the timeline for these uh, for these uh, um, for the first batch of students in the Arabic University? Well, we certainly hope so. The idea is that uh, we are now uh, launching uh, the program. We start developing it, and um, we as soon as the program is ready and accredited, we are going to start uh, taking students. It will be a four-year program. Initially, 
we are going to offer it to refugees. It will be, the university will be by refugees and for refugees. It will open the opportunity for refugees who were administration and uh, professors of uh, uh, universities and had to flee uh, the opportunity to work. The same, and they will teach uh, the refugees as well. But as soon as we do that, we can open the gates to any qualified student who speaks Arabic, wherever they are, to be able to study with us. So as we did in English, and we opened the gates to every qualified student, so will be the case in Arabic. And we hope that, uh, as you said, soon, next time, uh, we will be able to sit with many graduates with us. Yeah. Thank you. Shai, Shai has been heard to say that ultimately he would like the University of the People, both in its English and in its Arabic version, to, to build to where it had 100 million students, all of whom were getting quality, accredited college degrees for free. And the interesting thing about his model, as I observe it, is that it is, is scalable. We actually have many more volunteers than, than we can use at this point, because the, the one limitation on us, as Pascaline noted, is that because we have to maintain our accreditation, we have to provide, at the end of each course, an individualized, secure exam to each student. And, and that is a cost that, that uh, we can't wave away through volunteer effort. Uh, so so the, uh, we say to the students, if you can pay it, uh, pay it. It's $100 per course, still very inexpensive. But that, that uh, if you can't pay it, and all, we, all you have to do is say, I can't pay it, we will provide you a scholarship. So the limit on the number of students we can have, whether it be in English or in Arabic, whether it's the present 20,000 or his desired 100 million, all is simply the amount of money that we can raise through partnerships. And thankfully, we're, we're off to a good start. and We have 20,000 out there, but uh, we can scale very, very quickly and, and perhaps uh, add as many chairs as you want someday. <laughs> Thank you, John. 100 and million chairs. 100 yes. million chairs. <laughs> it seems like John just unveiled another one of your unconventional ideas, Jay. So let's see, let's see where we go with that. I'm also curious to see, I know my colleagues who speak Arabic always fight about what's, what's, what's Arabic. The, the, uh, my colleagues in Lebanon have a different opinion than the ones from Egypt and the ones from the Gulf. So uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll, you'll find a way there. Um, do you plan to um, open courses in other, uh, in other uh, disciplines as well? Is that something that you see on the horizon, or are you saying we're focusing for now on the business uh, uh, studies and then we, we take it from there? So University of the People offer associate and bachelor degree in business administration, computer science and health science, as well as MBA and master in education. Um, these are the most um, programs in demand in the world, we always look for programs that will help our students find a better job. Uh, we feel that the market for this or the need, the demand for these degrees is so vast that at this point we should expand in these disciplines before we move to new disciplines, but we don't rule it out in the long run. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Shai. And we've heard a lot today here from the World Economic Forum, including from His Majesty uh, the King of Jordan, from the forums. Chairman Professor Klaus Schwab from the UN Secretary General about the importance of education, about the importance of including young people uh, into society. And I think here we have a very, very real and concrete example how this is happening. So um, if you're watching this, make sure to share the live stream on your social channels. Tell your friends about it, especially if you live here in the region. Tell, tell as many friends as possible about it, because I think that's just a project that really uh, uh, deserves all the support uh, we can give. Um, if we have any questions in the audience, we have a microphone here. But I think everybody is in awe and um, all the questions have been answered for now. Um, maybe you want to mention the website that people can go to to learn more about the project? Sure, it's uopeople.edu, uopeople.edu. All right, thank you very much. Go visit that website, share that live stream. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being here. And a special thank you to my panelists today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.